Ignite Zoo is a partnership between Chester Zoo and Ignite Teaching School Alliance, which has seen us work with schools over the last couple of years to really put conservation at the heart of their curriculum. We believe that the children deserve the very best. And one of our principles of curriculum design is that we, we want to ignite the fire of curiosity of imagination in our children and the zoo is just such a perfect resource to do that not just to look at the, the geographical spread of where the animals come from but all the issues around culture around conservation around justice there's all sorts of themes and, and aspects that we can drive from the zoo into our curriculum and then they can get into the zoo and, and, and actually be part of it. The core purpose of Ignite Zoo is really about supporting schools to take conservation action, um, to move beyond children just learning about a subject, to them really being part of it, whether that's changing their playgrounds, campaigning for change with businesses or with our government, and them really thinking about the kind of world they want to live in and knowing that their voice matters and that whilst they're at school and they're working with their teachers and developing their own education, they can have used that to have a say in what happens in the future of the planet that they're going to be living on. When you look at the wider curriculum as well, you look at maths, you look at art, there's certain activities that are quite easy to integrate into school from a trip to the zoo. And what's been absolutely invaluable with our relationship with the learning team at the zoo is to think, well actually, how can a visit to the zoo, how can a relationship with the zoo really help us build the whole curriculum? I think. The benefit of us working with Ignite TSA is that we've been able to bring together our conservation education expertise with their teaching expertise, so they really understand how curriculum works, how to use different pedagogies, and we really understand how to inspire young people to act for wildlife, and bringing that together has been really powerful. So there are a lot of different stages to the Ignite Zoo project. It starts with a number of different CPD workshops for teachers uh, where curriculum specialists and experts in developing and engaging curriculum all come together with teachers from the participating schools. And the idea with that is that they can build an exciting and really experienced rich curriculum for their students. Following on from their CPD workshops, the teachers go back to school and work together with all the teachers and the teaching assistants um, to pull together an entire curriculum with conservation at the heart of it. So they might bring in conservation into their maths lessons, into their English lessons, into their art, their music lessons, and then over the course of the summer term they'll embed conservation into their school lessons. The children will take part and they'll do everything from writing letters to MPs in English asking them to Sort of promote sustainable palm oil. They'll talk to people about the illegal wildlife trade and it all ends up at the end of term with an incredible exhibition of all of their work, inviting their families, their friends, their parents, um, in, as well as lots of different leaders from the communities all coming in to see what the work the children have produced. So we got involved in the Ignite Zoo project because we were really keen to develop our curriculum. We wanted our curriculum to be more meaningful to our, to our children and we wanted them to be bothered and wanted them to be passionate about something. Um, I think for us the Ignite Zoo project, it provides a lot of CPD, a lot of professional development for all of our teaching staff. Um, we've even had teaching assistants as well as teachers who've, who've attended training. But even staff who, who didn't attend all of the training have then you know, have benefited from that, that training purely because they've come back to school and it's been shared, the good practice has been shared with each other. Teachers have said to me this is the best thing they've done and I think because the whole school's been involved together and we've all worked, it's been one massive team and we've all just really supported each other. It's brought everybody together and I think that sense of community because it's been a whole school project, everybody has been in it together and when we've had members of staff who perhaps aren't quite as creative or maybe haven't been quite so confident about it, everyone's worked together and shared ideas and I think that sharing of ideas has been really key. I think through the work that we've done when we work with schools on conservation issues which are very real, they're happening now, you see young people really inspired by what they're learning. It's really motivating to be writing about or doing artwork about real issues that really matter to them. We've been learning about hornbills. Hornbills are losing their habitats because of palm oil's plant. I am proud of my hornbill pictures and all of my writing that I've been up to. They're not working with pretend data sets in maths to learn a particular mathematical concept. 
they're working with real data, so they're understanding what's happening to forests in Borneo and the impact that their buying choices are having. But they're also doing really good maths at the same time because they're learning surveying skills or using real scientific data. And I think that's certainly the children that we've worked with have found that really motivating. Um, talking to students who tell us that it's learning that happens when they're in the playground as well because they're talking to children in other year groups about what they're learning. So it isn't just a maths lesson that stays in the classroom. It becomes the conversation in the playground or the conversation when they go home or they're going shopping at the weekend with their parents. So it makes it very real world. It doesn't feel like just something you need to learn about to pass the test. It's something you need to learn about because you're shaping the future of the world that we live in. And I think the fact that because it's a whole school project, the children right through from reception right through to year six, when they've gone home and they've been asked, you know, the parents say, what have you done today? They've had something in common to talk about and because they've, they've, it's had such an impact on them, they've, they've wanted to talk about it. I think it's had an impact on parents with their weekly food shopping. I know it's taken them a lot longer because they're having to check the ingredients, but that's what we wanted. We wanted children to care enough about something, to go home and to spread the word. We've been doing extra work at home, coming in with writing, with pictures, with, um, we've had hornbill nests made as well. We've had artwork and sculptures made at home. Children coming up to me in the middle of a lesson, Mrs Evans, I've done this, Mrs Evans, I've got this poster, where can we put it? Mrs Evans, I'm really, I'm really worried about the tigers, I'm really worried about the bats. Is there anything else we can do to help? And it's been in their own time, at home. We've been learning about the unsustainable and sustainable palm oil. Unsustainable means like in the rainforest, all the trees are getting chopped down and crushing animals' habitats. Just learning about the animals and learning to keep them safe. We're changing one thing. Because they know it's real, we've done lots of inquiry, we've asked them to go and find out about They've They've gone and found things in their own time and they know it's, it's, it's real facts, it's real animals, it's real creatures. Something that's happening now, it's very current and because the children can actually, because they, can, they feel that they can do something about it, they can have an impact. I think that's what's been, been really important because it's, it just, it's made it more meaningful for children and for families as well. We spent a lot of time at the beginning immersing them in, into the animal that they were going to be focusing on mainly and they really built up a love for this animal first and then we sort of introduced the problems and the crisis and because they already had that passion and that care for that animal I think that really really helped and the fact that we're in alliance with you, we came to you as a whole school as the launch of this whole project, so the children had seen the animals that they were going to be caring about. When we kicked off the project with our whole school visit to the zoo, that was amazing because it just got everybody buzzing about it, but then seeing how that then translated into school has just been, has been outstanding. You've seen children come into our exhibition and stop and, and be absolutely amazed. You know, we've had children who visited the exhibition four times, they've been back with mum, dad, nan, grandad, next door neighbour, and I think just seeing them being so passionate and talking so passionately about it, it's, it almost makes me feel quite emotional that you know, children of such a young age can have such a big, such a big voice. It's just been a fantastic project to be involved in. Parents have all been immersed and gone for the tour and they are wowed by how much information their children have. And us as teachers, we've stood back a little bit and listened to the tours going on. And it's just incredible listening to how much passion the children have got. The exhibitions have been amazing. It's a really great opportunity to see the whole school come together. The children in reception all the way up to year six showcasing the work that they've been doing. Um, it's been really great to see the children's artwork. It's been really amazing to see their letters uh, and their pieces of writing. Um, the stand of the work was amazing. Uh, and it was actually really nice to be guided around schools by the older children, particularly sort of the year fives and sixes. Um, not only showing off how proud they were of the work that they've been involved with, um, but telling us all about the amazing facts that they learned and all the ways that they were helping to protect wildlife. And I think, aside from all the benefits for wildlife of those young people taking action, which obviously, as Chester do, is something we're really interested in, being able to be part of fostering that love of learning and that interest in what's happening in the world around you and that desire to want to make a change for the better is just really a wonderful thing. The response from teachers as part of the project has been amazing. It's been really great to hear how some of the teachers have even fallen in love with teaching all over again and um, being inspired themselves to take action for wildlife but also that um, the curriculum having 
a real sense of something important behind it. I think it's given us now the confidence, as I say, we were looking at designing our curriculum. Moving forward, as I say, we don't want this to be something that we've done for the summer term. This is something that we want to build on so that now each year we'll hopefully have a conservation-based project, whether it be a local project or something that's more global. But I think it's given staff the confidence at looking how to de design a curriculum that's engaging, has that hook for learning that children are going to be bothered and have that voice. So I think moving forward, we've started on quite a journey now rather than it being, you know, an end, an end product, so I'm looking forward to this what the future brings with that. We're already looking at issues that we want to get our hands on really and just see if we can support because the children are passionate about it. We really want to see more projects happening and we're working with Ignite to provide more training to teachers on how to deliver this. We do know that not all teachers are comfortable teaching conservation, it's not a subject that they may have been taught. So we're developing that, but we also want to look at ways to roll the model out into other schools, whether that's through our Safari Ranger projects, where we're working with a lot of schools every year, whether it's through hosting debate events, um, discussions and other forms of teacher training, um, but also hopefully encouraging our politicians and those who make education policy to see the value of conservation education and to see why that this is a really good model for inspiring our next generation of people. Biodiversity as we know is in real trouble and we need everybody including our young people and our school communities to be taking action. So there's a real imperative for wildlife but I think there's massive benefits for children and young people and their education as well. For their education, working with real world issues can be really inspiring, it can help with learning across the curriculum, inspiring reluctant writers, making meaning in maths and art and other subjects, encouraging critical thinking and skills that children are going to need for whatever career they take up. And there are also, I think, softer benefits. A lot of the learning about conservation brings children in contact with nature and we know that there's now lots of evidence that having that connection with nature is really good for well-being. So there are lots of benefits, I think, to having conservation as a core part of curriculum in schools. We all in this changing world need to be learning how to do things differently for our kids and for, you know, the world. We want to develop citizens of the future, you know, we want to develop conservationists of the future. And, and our ambition really is to make sure that all schools within the locality benefit from a great relationship with the zoo and can build a world-class curriculum that our children deserve and that's what we want to have every day for them. So I think what I'd really like to see if all schools were doing conservation education in their classrooms is whole school campaigns. What we've seen with the Ignite Zoo project is not just children and their teachers learning about conservation and saying yes this is an issue that's happening but looking at what they can do, so whether that's writing letters to businesses or governments or making changes in their playground to make it more wildlife friendly. And I think that's one of the real changes is not just learning about habitat, but making habitat and actually making that change that's really positive for the environment and connecting what they do as a school community with others who can make a difference, whether that's local businesses or policy makers or connecting with conservation organisations, doing fundraising, finding out what conservation organisations do and looking at how they can support that work. I think it will take quite a lot of change, there will probably be changes needed to teacher training to make sure that they have the knowledge and skills they need about conservation issues, the actions that are needed and campaigning. But there are lots of organisations like Chester Zoo out there who can provide that support possibly changes in policy. We're seeing some things with Ofsted now about wanting a broad and balanced curriculum so it can work and it, conservation can be put across the curriculum in a way that delivers all of those other things that schools need to deliver around literacy and maths and some of those core subjects and I think you can see it might work with working with teacher training so looking at how do we provide training for teachers so they go into teaching knowing how to do this kind of project-based learning where they take a subject across all curriculum areas. So I think there are quite a few things that might need to change and we're looking at how we can provide support for that. We're no longer working as an individual school for something for our children, we're working within a broad partnership, talking about thousands of children and 
this has been possibly one of the most exciting things that has happened over the last few years in, in my view for curriculum development and it's something that if a zoo is not doing already they need to seriously think about doing because I think it's been it's been transformational and and we're only at the start of it I think you're going to see lots more to come because what we're going to be able to offer our children and it, is what we set out to be is world class so absolutely it's been brilliant working with the with the zoo and, and I look forward to doing much more of it over the coming years.